Hello. I'll be trying something new today, which is showcasing something I've been working on for a while, which is completely different from all of my OpenGL stuff, but it's something I'm quite happy to be doing. And I'm building an MMORPG in Unreal. <laughs> and, well, you know, when you're starting out with game dev, most people are often like, you know, what's the first thing you want to build? Like, you just came out of college, whatever degree, and it's like, I want to build an MMORPG. And everyone's like, you're an idiot, way too big, don't do this. I'm one of those idiots. <laughs> I just really love the games. I feel like I can do it. I'm just going to try and see how far I can get. And I got a pretty clever trick to make this work and kind of an indie level skill. And I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through this as kind of like an introductory video for this thing. Kind of how I've set it up, the base thing, um, see what I'm working on now, I'm going to continue this thing and what's coming up and next kind of. I think it's fun to sort of document the process. So this is like the first video of kind of like a periodic update blog thing where I'll be sharing the progress and you know showing you some tricks along the way how I approach this thing in Unreal. Oh yeah and it's in Unreal Engine 4. Um, Eventually I'll update to 5, uh, but let's first see if it can make this thing work. So, here is me. It's my character in an online persistent world. Um, this is kind of like a starting town. I'm using marketplace assets, just, you know, get the thing working. I'm a programmer, I'm not an artist. This works for me. <laughs> and I tweak things a little, you know, add some extra trees, make it more cozy. But most of it is just kind of pre-made assets. And... Well, you know, at this point, I'm just kind of walking around. Um, got a whole interface. It's placeholder, but it, you know, it works. It does the things. Uh, swap things around, you know, unequip gear. Uh, bah -bah. Weapons, without weapons, with a stronger weapon. Uh, I got some skills, you know, I could uh, put up a heal on some of my hotbar. There's some character stats I could increase. You know, every level you get some points. You, See what you can do, play a frame, you know, the basics, what you'd expect of an MMO. I got the skills, you know, I got like a kick, it's uh, well, it's kind of a slow weapon, let me do the quicker one. Spin, got some uh, area of effect skills. We got some buffs, uh, in this case it's a speed buff and it increases the skill of my character. You know, doesn't really look great icon-wise, but it, <laughs> it shows what it's supposed to do. I made this kind of like nice little area to try and, you know, practice a little on getting some AI working, all in network state, get some XP, some kills, get some loot from this thing. Uh, let's get the uh, area of effect in there. Hell yeah. Skills and mates, there we go. So yeah, it's kind of like the... The basic things of an MMO. But well, you know, I'm all preaching MMO and online and, you know, showing cool things, but it's so far just a single player experience. So let me show how the other process kind of works. I'm uh, booting up a new client. You can see all these windows here. And the way it's set up, each one of these is uh, an Unreal Engine server. Uh, it's a dedicated server. Each one is sort of focused on one specific map. Um, and I built this kind of like external tool, it's just a C-sharp server where basically um, it manages all the Unreal servers. So it's kind of like the global master server. I'll, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail later. But right now I'm basically booting up a client which connects to the um, menu server uh, where you can log in, you know, choose your character. However, it does look like I may be overusing my GPU while recording. So it, yeah, there you go. It's not too happy with all the instances are running. All right, now it's connecting to the master server. And it, oh no. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, well, we still got it. So let me just log into one of my other accounts. There we go. I believe this character is stored in the test map one server. So let's see if it's connecting. It is, yeah, there we go. This is kind of like, you know, the kind of default test map server, some mobs some things to test. There's a shop in there. I can buy some items, get me the shoulder pads. Uh, oh. It looks like I'm actually missing some requirements. Or, oh no wait, I already have one, so that's fine. Uh, and well, 
So the way this thing works is the moment I hit a portal, it basically, you know, talks to this master server thingy like, hey, I want to go to this new map. Is it already live, the server? If it isn't, it boots up the server. If it is, it gives me the IP of the server I want to join. And this thing actually goes to the main map, the Worldstone, kind of like fantasy village map. And let's see. Looks like it does all the connection behind the scenes. There we go. It's in. And then, you know, me boasting this is an online game. Yep, yeah, there we go. There's Broey. You can see it happening on the other screen as well. You can see this moving. And there we go. We can now quest together, party together, have fun. And networking wise, it should all work. It's persistent, database stores everything. However, I'm only really testing with two, three or four characters, right? So I can't say for sure yet on a larger level. So that's something I will be testing soon enough anyways. But yeah, kind of a quick rundown of what I'm doing now, what I have now. It's all just prototype, it's all tech based. But let me show you around in real. So let's close these. See the character logging off. So, so this is a familiar site here. Um, basically, each of the maps I have could kind of function as its own server. So let me show you in a bit more detail how the process works. Um, I made this beautiful mouse drawn image um so yeah there's a master server here which is uh this little thingy here which all it does is kind of it keeps track of all the servers you know the the, the actual game servers it launched behind the scenes uh if it hasn't it will actually launch them so it kind of manages all the other servers it's like a master server manager and all the clients do is communicate with this one kind of when it comes to you know going to a server new server changing maps um, and this master server in, in this case has booted up four servers where each server corresponds to one map like weldstone test map one the menu and the way it does it is uh client two here for instance uh it sends a request in green like hey i want to go to the weldstone map the master server, you know, checks its internal memory. Like, oh, okay, I already have a Weldstone server up and running on port 1338. So each server gets their own port. Um, so what it does, it returns with a message like, hey, this is the IP you need. It's in this case, it's all localhost. So it's 127.0.0.1 or 10 in this case. And with the port. And then client two knows, okay, so I'm just going to directly connect to the Weldstone server now using the information it got. And at that point, it's in the Weldstone server and it's just a direct client server communication uh, networking you're used to with Unreal Engine. And when it have, when needs to sw swap a map, go to a portal, there's some different map, the same process continues. And nothing too special, but what makes this pretty cool, in my opinion, um, is that each map in Unreal is its own server which seems like, oh, you know, not the greatest solution, but the major benefit of this approach is I can com almost completely um, use Unreal's networking for this project. So all the player character, the persistent data storage, um, all these skills, the inventory, the UI, the AI, everything kind of works within the programming I've set up for Unreal. Um, and to keep the persistence between the maps between Unreal, every time someone portals or transitions to a different map, it saves the player uh, to the database, travels to the new map, and loads the state from the database again. Uh, and this way for a player, it's like they're not even changing worlds. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to a different map, but technically it's all different servers. Of course, all connected to the same database. And this is great, because like, a lot of complication with MMORPGs is, you know, you have to create your own server backend and everything you expect in, you know, a game engine like AI, you know, uh, pathfinding, uh, you know, well, you know, like a lot of those things. Um, it's a lot of work because you have to remake those things on the server. You have to get the map state in the server. Uh, you know, all the interactions with NPCs, you have to all code that in, in the client in Unreal, but also in your own server backend. It's a lot of extra work, a lot of complicated work to do all by yourself. But me being able to utilize everything Unreal as the offer net networking wise and kind of uh, adding that persistent layer by switching between servers and maps this way, you get the whole MMORPG vibe. However, um, 
it is of course limited kind of by the Unreal network capabilities, which isn't really that well known for a large number of players. And of course you got loading screens, obviously. Like it's it's not a it's not an option you can do without loading screens. I think it's okay. I think I can push a hundred players um, per map. And you know, if you don't keep them too big, that's actually a pretty good number for MMOs, I think. Um, as long as the density is good enough, you'll see a lot of players. I know several MMORPGs do this as well. And if more players end up in a map, I can kind of use the instancing based approach, like the server manager. Um, if I have more than 100 players on a map, the server manager would just boot up another instance of the same um, map and just push the new players towards the second instance. And if eventually the first instance gets lower numbers, it can either move players around or, you know, it can just destroy the server and the second server becomes the main server again. Like it can internally keep track of multiple servers for the same map. So that all works, like dungeon-wise as well, you can very easily boot up new instances for a dungeon. So the approach works, I think, in theory. It's just a matter of like, okay, can we actually get this many players? And for what it's worth, the CPU resources so far on a non-graphical dedicated server instance, one of these, is pretty chill, like it's pretty low. So I'd say I think in total, booting all of these up in, an, in an, like an Amazon server, cloud server, could technically work. So that's why I'm, you know, putting my bets on this thing potentially becoming a cool indie thing. Um, it's a networking prototype at this point. See how far I can push the limits, uh, see how far I can get. And then from there on, I can see what I can actually make with this. So yeah. All right, let me show you some more things of how it's kind of been set up. It's uh, mostly a C++ project. A lot of the complicated mechanics are in C++, but I'm exposing all the relevant things for Blueprint for easier prototyping, you know, playing around with things, um, making it easier for designers later on as well to make their things. Yeah, the character is, is obviously the most complicated case uh, and is mostly component based. Like it's still a lot of <laughs> spaghetti in Blueprint as eventually I'll be moving most stuff to C++ where I can. But for now, you know, it does its thing. Uh, but you can see it here, like there's a lot of components. There's this, you know, component for buffs, for the, the class, the profession, and, you know, the player has, for the targeting mechanic, for enemies, friendlies, uh, inventory, equipment, skills, as in spells, uh, telegraph stuff, you know, the sort of put stuff on the ground for skill effects. There's the hotbar, leveling, looting, you know, and so on. And a lot of the logic is in there. And, you know, if there's new logic for the player, it's often a component, sometimes a shared component that the monsters can use as well. For instance, the telegraph component is something the more advanced AI enemies like bosses could potentially use. Uh, and see anything interesting for... Yeah, basically the equipment thing is kind of set up uh, uh, as separate skeletal uh, meshes for each individual part, where you can either show the body or actually use the bones for a clothing uh, equipment. I can get into a bit more detail on this, those things later. But it does work quite well. Um, some other cool things to show is um, the way I set up all the items in the game is uh, in a data table. And I set it up this way so it kind of like um, everything is on the package when you distribute it. So no overzealous transferring of data between players to save bandwidth and all it kind of needs is an ID and then whatever ID is passed around the player in their internal game package can look up the item. Uh, and it has a lot of settings, like, uh, you know, some, let's see, the X here, for instance, there's uh, have some modifier keys and values, like it can, you know, specify any kind of modifier in the items. This list is going to grow very large eventually, but you could even have like the scale, the movement speed change of a player on their items. There's requirements, right, obviously. There's things like right clicking for some effects. You could even have items that give you a buff, uh, you know, the effects, the sound effects. Kind of the things you expect and i'm pretty sure this list will expand you know the more mature the game actually gets and more things are set in stone but it's a pretty cool system like it's fairly easy for me to make some quick changes um same for these skills there's a i'm trying to set it up in a way where i can basically make most skills um through this system um, however there's always some unique skills where you can't really parameterize everything and that's why i've also added a what do they call it again a where are you? Ba, 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 ba. Uh, 
I am... Oh, there we go. Yeah, an activate object. So basically when the skill activates, I could technically uh, place a specific type of blueprint right from the, you know, the appropriate C++ class where you have a lot of events, uh, you could uh, add extra logic into a blueprint. So in the case of, for instance, a fireball meteor shower, you could have a blueprint object that spawns on the server, replicates to the relevant client, and then in this script you could spawn uh, meteors falling out of the sky, right? And that those do damage by themselves, kind of. And that's that. I think with that system in mind, it's it's fairly fairly para 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 yeah. I don't know English. The very easy to parameterize, but also gives you the options with this system to make a lot of unique skill effects. It is more bandwidth because it spawns stuff on the server that's replicating them around. But I think if it's most cases, I can actually deal with this system. And it's just a few occurrences, so I think it'll be fine, but time time will have to tell. Uh, so yeah, I think that's kind of like a very rough sketch of like how things are kind of going. I'll be, you know, whenever I'm doing some updates, I'll be working on very specific features. You'll see me talking about it, sharing details if you think it's interesting. Uh, or if you want me to, you know, deep dive into some things, you were like, oh, how did you actually approach this? Let me know. I, I'd be happy to explain. Um... So yeah, it's kind of a mess, but it's my mess. <laughs> and so far, prototyping is fun. Uh, it seems to be working. I've put a lot of effort into stabilizing things. Like with heavy lag, it should still spawn the players properly. It show all the replicated state, uh, even with switching maps. Um, so I'm getting more and more confident. I may actually be able to pull this off. So next up is basically um, working on the prototype, keep finishing it up. I'm fairly close to just putting this thing on an Amazon server at some point to actually test the load, see what I can push for this. Uh, so at this point I am mostly using this map as kind of like my little testing area. Like you see there's a little area here, there's a lot of areas I still need to build out. Um, and there's going to be a little dungeon over here, um, which is kind of like a mini end game I see for like the prototype. So I kind of expect to get this thing live. Uh, it'll be up to whatever, level 20, 25. I'll get a lot of cool items in there with different rarities so people can play around, have fun, and see if they can clear the dungeon. And I think that by itself would already make for a fun few hours gaming experience. Get some people on board, see how far I can push this thing. So the next up, uh, goals are stabilize, actually make some interesting items and skills. Everything is now just placeholder, weird icons. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, balance some of these statistics, make sure they actually all have an effect. Uh, build a lot of interesting items, get a lot of cool shop parts and build out the map. Get some enemies, get some cool loot, uh, you know, make it fun and interesting. And, you know, fix whatever bug still needs fixing uh, while I'm working. I think if I drag one of these, it actually disappears. Oh works today but a lot of small things that need need some love so yeah that's it my little mmo rpg project in unreal so if you want to keep up to date just you know hit the subscribe thing and i'll probably post a video once every few weeks until i have something interesting to show and hopefully a few months from now we can push something online see how it goes and if it does work out i'm going to be shifting gear dramatically and get some people on board really start building this thing out because then i know okay i've proven to myself i can make this thing work and then i'll actually be building the mmorpg i'd like to build a hint it's not a it's not a fantasy game so it will be completely different but it will use all the technology and the things used here but it's something again for a later video all right let me know if you think i'm an idiot probably <laughs> But I'd be happy to share my progress regardless. And if you want to see more, let me know. Or if you want something specific, hit me up. I'm kind of new to this whole video thing. So let's see how it goes. And let's make the best of it. Have a great day.